Speaker, COVID-19 has been the toughest test of the world's governance models. It illuminated cracks in our health systems, the weaknesses in executive functions, and stretched the capacity of legislative arms of state. South Africa has not been spared from these tests. Over the past year, it became clear that decades of mismanagement of our health system, the underinvestment and neglect of infrastructure would cost us dearly in this battle against this pandemic. We saw government resort to secrecy and err on the side of lockdowns and restrictions. We saw our healthcare facilities struggle to provide beds and in some instances even oxygen for those who needed hospitalization. In many instances, the pressures were so severe that even mortuaries could not keep up with the demand for burials. We saw parliament fumble, tripping over itself when it came to holding the executive to account. And while we eventually found our rhythm with virtual sittings of the House and accountability sessions in portfolio committees, this pandemic clearly found us flat-footed and ill-equipped to deal and rise to the occasion. The partisan nature of Parliament made holding government to account an impossible task. In committees that are composed of majority of ANC members, the executive was often protected and shielded, and tough questions were blocked despite the crisis that we have found ourselves in. The members of this House, the members of this House chose party lines over tough decisions that were so desperately needed in a time of crisis. For many, executive accountability, checks and balances, which are key tenants to our constitutional democracy, were viewed as attacks. Pertinent questions were treated as antagonism. And when the opposition started to ring the alarm about the vaccine rollout plan late last year, we were told all is under control. Except it wasn't. It was only months later when other countries that are similar to ours that have the same socioeconomic status as ours started to roll out their vaccine plans that we started to scramble for scraps on the international table. Throughout this entire test of democratic South Africa, the true heroes were our healthcare workers. However, this battle is far from over. We are only at a different phase of this pandemic. We're at a crucial time where government now is expected to acquire and roll out an effective vaccine against the 501YV2 variant that is dominant in South Africa. The process up until now has been marred with challenges, some beyond our control and some of our own making. When it became clear that government was not forthcoming with a concrete and codified plan of how it would fulfill its own goal of vaccinating over 40 million South Africans by year end, we decided to approach the Western Cape High Court to force the presidency to do so. You see, we cannot perform our constitutional obligations of holding government to account if we have no benchmark against which we can gauge performance. You would think that this is something so very clear to the members of this House. But no, again, executive accountability is often seen as an attack from this side of the House, as opposed to an opportunity to rise to excellence. When the legislature failed to demand this from government, we had no choice but to require a court of law to do so. The Constitutional Court has played this role before, when it compelled the Department of Health to roll out ARVs back in 2002 from a case that was brought to it by the TAC. It was only after the DA's court action that government, government finally provided some semblance of a detailed response that we received late last week. The excuse that no codified plan could be produced because the environment is highly competitive and forever changing members is simply lazy at best. Parliament cannot be treated as an inconvenient stop for the executive, as an annoying stakeholder to be pacified. It has to be a center of excellence, but it starts with each and every one of us. We need to demand excellence from the executive, and we need to stop being so obsessed with shielding people along political lines. 
where we as members, we need to ask those difficult questions. Despite the changing factors, there must be a plan that must be detailed. And so some of these questions that we need to ask on this plan are, the manufacturers that government is negotiating with. This does not mean undermining sensitive negotiations, but an indication of where we are, where we are acquiring vaccines, what are the doses, and what are the expected timelines. The expected doses of those vaccines, because again, it's become very clear that we're gonna be obtaining vaccines from various parts of the world, from various manufacturers. That too is an acceptable strategy. But again, this house needs to be appraised of those details in a detailed fashion, in a codified plan that can be tabled in this house for scrutiny. Provincial readiness to roll out phase two and phase three. Members, now it begins the task of rolling out a vaccine to the broader public. And that it becomes an incredibly difficult task. And so we have to rise to that occasion because we know that ours is a broken health system. There are clinics and hospitals that don't have functioning electricity. And so what we're we expecting to government to do to be able to roll out that vaccine in those very remote parts. And the other question that we wanted from this plan was a budget allocated. What will the provinces be responsible for? What will be the national government and national treasury be responsible for? And we hope that tomorrow, when the Minister of Finance has an opportunity now to table that plan so that we can, again, practice our, our, our function of accountability by interrogating that budget speech and seeing that, in fact, an allocation is made. And lastly, in the plan, we also expected to see that we will be halting of vanity projects like SOE bailouts. The reality is that South Africa does not have a money problem. South Africa has a prioritization problem. Are we so used to mediocrity that asking even the very basic questions like this requires us to resort to legal challenge? Can we not demand more from our government? Countries the world over are vaccinating people in their millions, and we have yet to breach our 50,000 mark. Pointing this out is not just being oppositional or being negative, but it's simply demanding more from our government, as we all should, regardless of where you sit in this house. In reality, in reality, here are the facts. The vaccine committee was only established in September last year, while other countries had already started negotiations with manufacturers in May last year. South Africa only registered for the COVAX facility on the 10th of December, and that was the only intervention that was on the table at the time, while all other countries had already started putting jabs in arms. The Department of Health only began negotiations with Treasury for procurement deviations only last month, an indication of an impossibly delayed strategy. The longer we take to vaccinate people, the higher the chances of a virus mutation, which undermines the efficacy of vaccines and worsens our chances against the third wave. That is why it is crucial that this House responds to the call of this crisis. We ought to place our party affiliations aside and unite in driving government to roll out a vaccine to as many people as possible, regardless of where they are in the country. We need to unite to call for an ad hoc committee that will oversee the work of the interministerial committee that would account to this house so that we can demand deadlines, so we can demand uh, efficient rollout of this vaccine, and we can also demand to make sure that that min interministerial committee is not the subject of a, of a commission of inquiry years from now. We need to make sure that this process is free from corruption, but we can do that only if we unite and put our differences aside. We need to also unite in our understanding, Chief Whip, of our role and execute it ruthlessly. The rules of the National Assembly empowers us all to establish an ad hoc committee that will deal with specific issues, like this vaccine rollout plan. Would it not send the most assuring message to South Africans if we could all vote for the establishment of this committee, regardless of who sponsors it? But we won't, because we come here more concerned about our party positions than we are about the people that sent us here. We would be able to summon the executive, issue deadlines, perform oversight, and hold them to, debt, to timelines that ultimately make sure that this task is carried as efficiently as possible. The next phases of this vaccine rollout plan are difficult, and they are crucial. 
Phases two and three will mean a wider rollout of this vaccine to the most vulnerable across the country. Of course, this will have its own massive challenges, but we too can be of great assistance by raising awareness about the importance of vaccines, by conducting oversight in our constituencies, by ensuring that clinics and distribution centers are ready. But we cannot simply relegate ourselves to being cheerleaders and bench warmers here, celebrating mediocrity instead of demanding better for the people that we serve. Let us show up for the people of this country so that we can get their government to work for them so that we can save lives and livelihoods. There has never been a more watershed moment for this house than right now. And we owe that much to the people that sent us here. Thank you.